guess it made me a better person. Strong. Ten years later, she rebuilt her life and has a new home. After the waters of the cold river only left this piece of her original home. I was in the truck, driving, watching the water in my mirror and everything coming behind me and telling the people in the village that were on the radio what was coming to get everybody out of there. Plus, a never heard before account of what happened from a man who risked his own life to save others. It was a disaster, it was a tragedy, but I think it really reflects New Hampshire at its very best. And key to the recovery was the leadership of Governor John Lynch, who shares his memories of the town coming together. It looks completely different than it did before. That's, that's the end result. But they did a great job of putting us back together. Plus, rising above, through determination and donations, the town of Alstead is preparing to mark the 10th anniversary of the October 2005 flood. Good evening. I'm Tom Griffith. And I'm Jennifer Vaughn. It has been 10 years since parts of southwestern New Hampshire were changed forever. The rising water caused a culvert to collapse. Sending a wall of water rushing down Route 123. Anything in its path was swept up. Four Alstead residents were killed, home after home destroyed, along with miles of road and bridges. This is the first video from the night the rains wouldn't let up. Our cameras lit, showing firefighters the way to a home to check to see if anyone was still inside. The next day, the true scope of the damage was seen. Not since the 38 hurricane. Major roads crumbled, bridges, homes, and businesses washed away. It sounded like thunder from all the things crashing and breaking and going down the river. It's beyond devastating. People don't know what we've been through here. And countless lives changed forever. This is the worst devastation that I have ever seen here in New Hampshire. The force of the water swallowing everything in its path. And crushed down like a, like a soda can that's been just crushed and stepped on and crushed and crushed and crushed. Even the town's own police department not spared from the damage. Before that, you, the, everything you, you could have driven into the parking lot, for goodness sakes. And by the time I got upstairs and looked back, things were going over the bridge. Town leaders worked around the clock to help residents, even while their own homes were in jeopardy. My family's stranded at my house with water going around it, and we're going to get them. So many people left with nothing. And, and what got swept away? Everything. I, I mean, all my vehicles, customer vehicles, the whole building, the, everything, tools, equipment. Some people lost everything. I'm just uh, at a loss in restarting. I grew up in that house. I mean, it's memories. You know, it's just gone. I'm a strong woman. I'm going to get through this. The four Alstead residents who lost their lives in these devastating floods were Sally and Tim Canfield, Spencer Petty, and William Seal. Their memories live on, and later on in this show, we'll have more on the special memorial being built here. Nearly 40 homes were destroyed, washed right off their foundations. And in some cases, washed away completely. We first met these families as they tried to pick up the pieces. Our Jean Mackin returned here to check in on a couple families she first met a decade ago. It is incredible to me that 10 years ago, I stood right here in Alstead in the rain on the edge of this bridge over the cold river. Members of the National Guard are here with heavy machinery to start fixing the roads. It is amazing to be back 10 years later, not just because of the incredible job rebuilding, but because the spirit and determination we found here a decade ago is still alive and well. It was about 6 o'clock, and my neighbor next door was pounding on my door and told me I had to get out. Marlene Wade got out of her home along the cold river just in time, taking her husband, who was in a wheelchair, to the fire station before the wall of water took their house. All I could hear was like stones banging. 
We met Marlene 10 years ago. Her home gone. The only possession she could find fit in the back of a pickup truck. And still she stood tall and stoic. We're doing all right. The, the children are very upset because they're worried about me, but you know, I'm a strong woman. I'm going to get through this. And I guess it made me a better person. Strong. She rebuilt nearby, but still on the banks of the river. In the past decade, Marlene lost her husband. She keeps his photograph in her new home near a painting of their old house and cherishes one of the few things saved from the flood, a gift from their children on their 50th wedding anniversary. It survived the uh, flood, I'm surprised, without any damage. I had to clean it up, but without any damage. It was a miracle. Oh yeah, it is very hard to believe it's been 10 years. 10 years ago, Rock Wilson evacuated his home at midnight and returned the next morning to find it destroyed. It was pretty much put out into the roadway. It was close to being in the road. And it was, it was definitely destroyed. And he lost so much more. His good friends, Sally and Tim Canfield, were still in their house when it was swept away. They lost their lives. And to this day, a cross and a flag mark where their home once stood. I remember him. I mean, I knew him really well. So that, that's hard remembering them. Rock went on to become a selectman, took over his father's metalworking shop, and rebuilt the family home on higher ground in Alstead. I was born and raised here. I mean, this is my town, so I wouldn't leave. Marlene also stays right here. No river can move her from the place she calls home. From then on, I just started building my life on faith. And I'm still here, soon to be 81. I love this little town. Town leaders say Governor John Lynch was key in the town's recovery. They credit his work to unify agencies in order to streamline the process. As he toured the damage, he even gave out his personal cell phone number to residents and local officials so they could reach him directly. And they say he answered nearly every time. He checked back in often, especially at places like this, the Alstead Fire Department, and proved time and again that he could lead through difficult times. Here are the memories he carries with him to this day. It looked like a bomb had been dropped on Alstead. Um, the place was devastated. Um, as we all know, there were roads that were washed out, homes destroyed. We later learned that four people lost their lives in the Alstead area alone. Communication was down. People didn't have power. Uh, the place was really a mess. There was a unique gesture that you made um, on behalf of just you personally to the victims and to all of the safety officials during the course of this event was to hand over your personal cell phone number. They still talk about that to this day. Why did you find it necessary to do that? Well, I didn't find it necessary, but I wanted to do it. I wanted people to be able to call me direct if they had a problem, however big or small that problem was. And if I heard about it, I could then contact the right people and make sure that problem was solved. On a scale of what you've seen, and there have been some severe incidents in New Hampshire during your tenure as governor, where did Alstead come in? Alstead, what was, was so bad about the disaster in Alstead is Alstead as a community itself was devastated. Um, there have been uh, broader natural disasters covering more of the state, although a lot of the state was impacted even with the Alstead floods. Um, so been broader, but I've never seen anything hit one community so hard. Is there an image that strikes you as something you're particularly proud of in the recovery of Alstead 10 years later? Yeah, the image I have is the fire station. Um, that's where we set the emergency response operation and how we were in that fire station all the time. So that's the image I have is how everybody came together. It was a disaster, it was a tragedy, but I think it really reflects New Hampshire at its very best. Chief Christopher Lyons carries with him to this day the card that Governor Lynch handed out, which included his personal cell phone number. He told me what sticks with him is just how much the governor cared about every person in town. 
A town where the chief had more than a flooded police department to worry about. He had to act fast when he learned the water was racing toward town. He remembers charging to the bridge and ordering everyone off. I remember all the things I learned from everybody, whether it be the governor. Everybody had something to offer during this thing. I've taken things from my road agent. I've taken them from my fire chief. And, um, and just, just the bonding that occurs when you go through something like this. While Christopher Lyons is now serving as chief of police in nearby Marlboro, that road agent he has a forever bond with is still on the job here in Elstead. His name is David Crosby. Do you tell many people about this ride you made down the hill? No. Do you talk about it much? Not if I can help it. Now, for the first time, David Crosby is sharing his heroic story. He rarely tells it, and never publicly until now. He told our Gene Mackin about the ride of his life that started right here, all to save other lives. There was water coming out of that pipe, 12 foot in diameter, doing a spiral going up in the air. Longtime Alstead Public Works Director David Crosby remembers exactly where he was that day, watching water shoot out of the culvert above town while more backed up against the hill holding it. There was a whirlpool at that culvert you could hang this truck inside of, that truck, and it never would have got wet. He saw the hill holding back all that water start to give way. I knew what was next because you could see the ground just sloughing off and going away. And I stayed there as long as I dared. What happened next is a moment of heroism and history rarely shared until now. David Crosby did not seek safety on higher ground. He did not run for his own life. He drove downhill to save other lives with a 30-foot wall of water in his rearview mirror. I was in the truck driving, watching the water in my mirror and everything coming behind me and telling the people in the village that were on the radio what was coming to get everybody out of there. And they were running, scrambling up the banks and when they see the stuff coming behind me. And the water followed me down with the mobile homes and everything behind me. It's not pretty. A surfer on the ocean, that's what the mobile homes look like, surfers. Coming down behind me. And when the mobile homes hit the bridge, they just disintegrated. Crosby kept pace ahead of the wall of water. He remembers forcing three cars to turn around and race to safety. Can't describe it. It's it was trees snapping, there was power lines doing this, coming down behind me. Things arcing and snapping and there was a sound to it, all right. It was just, but it's eerie. In his heart, David Crosby knows the evacuations overnight and his race to warn people saved lives that day. Sure did. Yeah. Wish we could have saved a few more. That night, 10 years ago, we found David Crosby working with the fire department to rescue people. His own family called for help. My family's stranded at my house with water going around it, and we're going to get them. Turns out, his 8-year-old son followed in his father's footsteps. He carved a path to safety. He took my tractor and made a road over the hill so they could get out, and I could get in at 8. David Crosby kept his heroic actions under wraps. He rebuilt his town and just celebrated 30 years on the job, including one day he will carry with him always. Never forget it, i tell you that. Never. Next, three months of rain in one day. An in-depth look at the forecast from 10 years ago, plus... Repairing the roads and bridges destroyed was no easy task. Hear from a team of workers who dedicated countless hours to rebuilding this town. And marking this 10th anniversary in a unique way, from photographs to a special memorial dedicated to those lost.